Oh, hi there, anyone that might be interested. Um, I thought I would do a quick video on um, the macro focus rail control board that I've uh, put together. Um, it's clearly a, presently a prototype, um, it's not cased. Um, this is the way I tend to sort of start a project, is by building a prototype in, generally in this form. Uh, and then um, I, with possibly, possibly might go ahead and uh, make PCBs if, if anybody is interested and maybe wants to build one. Um, but, but, but for the purposes of this video, I thought I'd just go over the, the board because uh, I find quite often people look at the boards and think, oh, there's quite a lot of components on there and um, it looks complicated. But when you actually break it down into its constituent parts, it's, it's not particularly complicated, especially when you're using a PIC because almost all the functionality is in the microprocessor. Uh, most of the other stuff is just sort of ancillary bits and bobs. Anyway, so um, I, I tend to um, start using um, as a platform uh, using one of these development boards, which is just is a pencil for reference. Uh, pretty small board with uh, through hole plated holes, um, completely blank, um, and you just pop all your bits on. You know, basically what I usually do is I just position all the components in a aft sensible way, and then I just use some fine mod wire on the underside of the board to sort of wire everything up. So uh, where do we start? Um, hmm. Um, right. Okay. We'll start with the. I mean, let's start with this top section here um, because this is this is the power. This is a, a very simple power supply. So we've got uh, input power jack connector, 2.5 millimeter power plug, or power socket, I should say, uh, and then a very simple power supply. So it's uh, just a couple of capacitors, uh, a small uh, 7, 8, LO5 sort of 100 milliamp voltage regulator and then a couple of output capacitors and that's that's the whole so that's taking uh, input from I don't know say a, well in my case a 12 volt power supply and produces the 5 volt rail required for the um, all the you know the other active components on the board uh, this little regulator is only supplying power to the active components on the board it's not supplying power to the motor that's being powered directly from the 12 volts um, so I suppose the main um, the main player on the board, if you like, is the is the pick. So this is this part here. This chip is a 28-pin um, microchip 18F2550 uh, 8-bit microcontroller. Um, I'll put the data sheet on the on the um, on the instructable, and I'm not going to go through its functionality now because it would take me hours. There's so much packed into these picks that um, it's easier to look at the. Um, uh, data sheet, but for the purposes of this project, uh, I picked this particular pick. Um, I, 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 there's a few that I tend to um, select. Um, this one I picked particularly because it has a, a USB 2 uh, hardware uh, module built in, so it supports USB 2 um, with the appropriate software stack. Um, and I've used this chip and its larger cousin, the 4550, which is a 40 pin variant, um, several times before. So if I need USB, which this project is, has a USB connection, then I, I use, tend to use this pick just because I'm familiar with it. Um, in terms of other functionality, I'm using some onboard timers. I say the USB 2 interface, uh, um, quite a lot of the GPIO. Um, to um, that's the basically configurable pins on the on the chip to control various other bits on this board, LEDs, um, other functions on the board, um, some onboard yes, yeah, say some onboard timers, other, other other things. I'm not using any serial ports or anything like that. So that this pick is basically running uh, two pieces of firmware. It runs a, a bootloader, which uh, I'll go into more detail uh, a little bit later. It runs a bootloader, and it's then it's running it's running the actual application code, which is. Um, uh, is, is controlling everything, the motor and everything else on this board. Um, and that's, yeah, that's being controlled in turn by the PC application over the USB over the USB link. So there's a few other bits and bobs around here. This little, this a little switch here, little push button. Um, that's just a reset button so I can reset the pick easily. Um, there's a little uh, heartbeat LED here. So this LED flashes at about one hertz when the pick softwares up, just as a um, well, just a, you know, it's a feel-good factor. Really, it's, it serves no purpose other than flashes to let you know that software is running on the pick and it's not flatline. Um, there's a couple of LEDs here. Um, the one closest um, to well, you can't see the the rail at the moment. The rail over there. Um, these are direction LEDs. So this this one comes on if the rail's moving in 
towards the op towards the uh, photographic subject, and this one comes on if the rail's moving in the opposite direction. Uh, there's, uh, this particular pick doesn't have an onboard oscillator, well it does have an onboard oscillator, but um, I'm using it with an internal frequency of 32 megahertz um, from an external 4 megahertz crystal and it's associated uh, caps, tank caps. So There's a little cap here, um, that's actually quite important um, for USB. Um, the, on, the pick has an onboard power supply for part of the USB functionality and it, and it requires an external cap only a hundred or a couple of hundred nanofarads or something like that um, to ground, um, but the USB interface won't work without that, so that's quite important. Um, what else we got here? Um, talking pick, with this uh, header up here, okay, you can't see it very easily, it's uh, one, two, three, four, six pin header, that's the programming header, so I, I use a pick kit three um, pick programmer and that plugs onto there which allows me to flash the pick um, with firmware or, or I can flash it via the bootloader. Uh, what else we got here? Um, well, the other, I suppose, main component on the board is this module here. Um, this is the um, stepper motor driver. So it's, a, it's like an in integrated module. It's really easy to use. So it's ideal for this, this for this purposes, for purposes of this project. So it's got a, yeah, it's an onboard um, bipolar uh, stepper motor controller. Uh, that allows you to go full step down to 16th step. Um, you just basically you hook it to some power, you hook the motor one side of it, it's got a direction pin uh, and a step pin, and you just you, know, you select the direction you want, you, you, you drive the step pin, you select how many steps, micro steps you want, full step down to 16th step, and that's it. And you power it up and it, and it just drives the motor, as simple as that. Um, yeah, made, made the whole thing really easy, really. So um, yeah, so that's driving the motor. It's got a little heat sink on top because the motor is about an amp or something like that, possibly. Um, so I mean, this doesn't even really get warm, just a little bit warm, but not. I wouldn't say it gets hot. Um, we've got uh, these packages here, these sort of long uh, yellowy orangey packages here. These are just resistor arrays. They just make it easier to build the board. Uh, one of them, one of them is um, contains uh, uh, four four resistors, separate resistors. So it's got eight pins, four resistors, and th those are being used for um, current limiting for the LEDs. So there's four LEDs, and each LED has got its own little resistor in here. I think they're 1.8k something or 1.5k. I can't remember something like that. Um, current limit. So it just makes it, you know less messy on the board uh, and then there's another one over here uh, which is a slightly different configuration that's nine pin and that's got four resistors but in in with a with a common tap so those are so you've got those are being used as um pull-ups so the the common taps connected to plus five volts and then you've got um no, actually uh, eight resistors sorry not four eight resistors in a pull in a pull-up mode uh, so that's being used for uh pulling up. Well, you can see from the circuit diagram which what, what's being pulled up. Um, so that's that. Uh, oh, uh, then we've got this little control here. It's a little rotary control. I'll just spin this little fella around. This is a two-bit uh, grey code uh, rotary encoder with a, a built-in centre switch, which I've used these quite a lot before. They're quite cool and they're really cheap. So that's being used. Uh, I, I thought I'd build this in, um, so um, you can control them the the slide position obviously via the PC application with the in out in out or uh, focus in focus out buttons, or if you want to manually control the slide, you can um, set. It'll be explained in more detail in the rest of the instructable. But basically, you can rotate this and move the slide in and out by hand rather than using the, the PC application and then you can push the center button and that puts it into a different mode where you can set how coarse or fine you want to move the slider and then you push it again and then that, then that, that setting becomes um, you know current and then you can move the slide in in very very fine steps or coarse steps just sort of be nice to I mean I suppose you can still focus the camera with, the, with its lens but you can move the slide with this man, uh, manually um, on the connector front, we've got a US standard USB connector here. Uh, this connector is a four 
pin mini din um, and those four pins are used for the four wires connecting to the um, um, stepper motor, the cables over here, stepper motor slightly out of shot. Um, this connector here is a three pin mini din uh, and that's being used to um, connect to the camera. So that has three pins, a common, a um, one pin which is being used for or could be used for um, uh, sort of half to press on your shutter release to, to get, gain focus lock and exposure lock and then the other one is used to actually release the shutter. I'm not using the, um, the, 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 the half depressed or focus lock um, mode because I'm, I'm, I'm using the camera completely manually with manual focus so basically all, all I'm doing from this board is firing the shutter. But I could do. I could add that functionality to the to the software if if, if I wanted to. So that's basically it, really. Um, oh, sorry. One part I've forgotten to mention: this little white um, six-pin chip down here. This is an optical isolator, opto isolator, uh, which is um, essentially it's got a, a photo-sensitive transistor and LED in the package. Uh, um, and the reason I'm using that is because I'm I don't want my camera directly coupled to anything on this board because we've got 12 volts and 5 volts and all sorts of stuff flying around on this board um, and it's always good practice when you've got you know an expensive camera uh, to optically isolate it uh, from the board so by that I mean it's the um, although the camera is being fired via this optical isolator it's not physically connected to anything on the board um, the transistor which is actually firing the camera is completely isolated in this package and it's optically coupled. So if something goes horribly wrong on this board, it's unlikely to damage the camera. Um, so yeah, that's always a good, always a good plan. That's about it really. Um, hmm, what else can I say about this board? Not much. I mean, the same. All the um, all the all the all the all the fancy stuff's been done in the pick, really. All the rest of this is just indicators, buttons, power supply, connectors, switches, resistors. And stuff like that there's nothing really of any it's nothing really complicated on here um, anyway so um, that's about the size of it I'll um, hopefully that'll make it a bit a bit clearer to um, in terms of uh, you know looking at the, the reading the rest of the instructable anyway um, thanks for listening if you've managed to get this far and um, I'll be back soon